Hi, so let me introduce you first. Fernando A. Garcia Bastidas is a postdoctoral researcher at Kijin in Wageningen, the Netherlands. His presentation title for today is Identification of Resistance to Guarian Tropical Race 4. Fernando is a Colombian agronomist master in plant biotechnology and a PhD in plant sciences, such as phytopathology and plant breeding. You have to excuse me for not being so familiar with the STEM terms, but we'll get there at the end of your presentation, I'm sure. For seven years, yep. you have worked as an associate researcher at the National Coffee Research Center of Colombia, CENI Cafe, in the coffee breeding program. And during the same period, uh, Fernando has also been a university lecturer for two years. And since 2012, he focuses on the Fusarium banana photo system, the causal agent of the Panama disease in bananas at Wageningen University and Research. He completed a doctorate at the former Plant Research Institute, the PRI, and currently he is a postdoctoral researcher and breeder in the banana program at Kijin in Wageningen, the Netherlands. Thank you very much. We know you're also known as the banana man. The floor yeah. is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, um, thanks for the um, invitation. Thank you. Okay, good. So yeah, uh, thanks for the invitation. It's, uh, it's an honor and to, to share a, a little bit of uh, my work with all of you and the people that are watching on Facebook and other platforms. Um, yeah, also thank you and congratulations to Ido and Danny to open this academic space for all of us. So as you can see today, we are going to talk about bananas and Panama disease. Panama disease essentially is a disease that kills bananas. Um, as uh, as uh, Danny mentioned, my name is Fernando. I'm Colombian. I'm currently working in the Netherlands. Uh, today, I'm going to focus on one specific project that is the identification of resistance to, to this disease uh, with a breeding idea. So, I, uh, with the idea to generate new bananas. Uh, half of, I started my scientific life, let's say, in 2005 when I and for half of my life, scientific life, I was working on the coffee. And then I decided to make a, a break and go or come to the Netherlands for a PhD. And then I changed from coffee to, to banana, two very important crops in my country. And I think very important products for all the complete world. Currently, I'm a postdoc in Kijin, which is an innovation company, which tries to do breakthrough uh, technology to accelerate many of the processes during the breeding activities. So if I ask you to, to think about bananas, most likely the first thing that comes to your mind is, um, is this, right? The beautiful, perfect banana that you can find in every supermarket, part of the diet of many people, but essentially as a dessert, also in another environment. But just to, to let you know, most of the bananas that you find in the supermarkets are clones, are genetically identical. It doesn't matter the sticker that you find in the, in the bananas. Uh, every banana is, it can be considered as a um, uh, clone, so genetically identical. But all these bananas belong to one group that's called the Cavendish bananas. But this is actually a group of cultivars. So in, in, in between this group, you can find cultivars such as Grant Name, Williams, Pollo, Valerie, and, and many other ones. But bananas are more than that. What you can see now in this uh, slide is a cooking banana, which is very important because it's staple food in Latin America, in Africa, and in many other countries. Actually, in some countries, it's more important than the Cavendish banana. So in many cultures, every part of the plant of the banana plant is used for clothing, for fibers, the leaves, the stem, the fruits, and it's used in a different ways. In this case, for example, in Africa, you can see that they use the some specific fruits to make a beer. But why we are using only uh, one banana in, in, in most of the parts of the world? We have thousands of varieties with potentials for cultivation, but unfortunately, 
we are focused on just a few ones. The center of origin of the banana is, this, is Southeast Asia. In this slide, you can see just a little taste of the diversity of the wild types. Why are those wild types important? We cannot eat them, of course, because they are full of seeds, as you can see in this slide, but they are very important because they contain traits, they contain genes that we can use, genes for taste, for uh, shape, for, and most importantly, for resistance in my case, because I'm looking for the resistance to, to the disease. So every banana that you find in, in, in the world, every edible banana are originated from these two ancestors, Musa cuminata and Musa balbiciana. They, they provide all the diversity of bananas that we have. In, they, they mix many years ago, and the selection of humans and domestication uh, produce what we have now, many types of banana, including the Cavendish. The domestication that I'm mentioning is, it was not a matter of 10 years, 100 years. Actually, the domestication of the banana started uh, 7,000 years ago, and that's all these processes of domestication provide all this uh, group of bananas that we have at the moment. Bananas are very important. It's a very important business. It's a fruit number one, actually. But before the Cavendish, there was one totally different banana. It was called the Gros Michel. I said it was called because for the, the export trade is extinct and that's because of the disease, which we're going to see in the coming slide. So the Gros Michel was the, the, the banana of our grandfathers. It was nicer, bigger and very strong. And also was the only one that you could find in every, probably not supermarkets because in the previous century there were not too many, but probably in every market. In the previous century, many uh, events that changed the life of people, but also for the banana was an important thing because of the appearance of this disease. This disease actually wiped out the production of Cavendish of Gros Michel around the world. The responsible of this disease is a fungus that's called Fusarium oxysporum forma special cubense. The race one of this disease really destroyed the industry of the banana in the previous century. So this became a dream. They tried to control the disease with many, many practices and there was nothing to do. The, the, the pathogen spread around all the production areas and eliminated all the bananas. So by the end of the 50s, it, that was the end of the Gros Michel era. But what happened? They found a nice banana similar to Gros Michel, not as good as the Gros Michel, but was resistant to the race one. So we can say that the Cavendish clones saved the industry of the banana. What happened? Again, thousands and thousands of plantations were established using just one clone again, the monoculture, just doing the same mistake once again, thinking that this um, banana will save the industry forever. But it was not like that, because at the beginning of the 90s, having these bananas started to show symptoms again, as you can see in this picture that I took in Philippines. Same symptoms, same problem. And initially, it was considered the Panama disease 2.0, but later on, people realized that it's a different race. It was not race one anymore, but this was decided to be called as tropical race four. Susceptible, uh, uh, is susceptible. Initially, um, it was a problem, local problem for Southeast Asia, but later it became in a pandemic because it started to spread around. And here start my work. During my PhD, I was involved also in the diagnosis of the disease, these are publications that we got, we obtained, identifying the disease in new locations. So you can see my work started around 2012, but you know the publications always come later. And we evolve also in the techniques to, to detect the pathogen in new plantations. So at the beginning, we had to do a lot of uh, tiring and time consuming tests, but nowadays we, we the technology is easier. So, using sequencing, for example. Thanks to that, I've been invited to give uh, many conferences and also workshops on diagnostics in many countries in Latin America and also in countries in, in, in other places. We wrote this book recently, uh, it's in Spanish, but the English version is coming soon, uh, about the diagnostics of TR4. You can download it in my research gate or from this presentation. I guess you are going to get all the presentations later. So the pathogen 
is a fungus, as you can see here. These are super beautiful pictures we made recently with um, scent captures. Uh, the fungus here is coming out of the plant, of the plant, of the banana plant. These are pictures are beautiful, but then you can see also how deadly is this fungus. It just go inside of the plant and start to grow, blocking the vascular system of the plant. And all this white stuff that you see here is the fungus growing inside the plant. As you can see here, the fungus is also breaking the cells. These are the seeds yellowing and wilting in different plantations. This is how it looks inside of the plant. And what have we learned about, uh, about this disease from the past? Actually, nothing. Because the same problems that happened with the gross Michel and the race one are happening now with the Cavendish and the tropical race four. This is just the effect in, of the pathogen in the field. So there are some strategies to manage the disease because once this fungus is in the soil, it's virtually impossible to eliminate it. So it's not possible to control, but we can say manage. Those are some of the strategies. And of course, I'm focused on the genetic control. That means that we are focused on the development of new varieties. How do we do that? So we collected a lot of plants or banana plants from all over the world with different institutions. And I have this great opportunity to play with thousands of different types of bananas. And first of all, develop the protocols to artificially inoculate them in the greenhouse. And as you can see in this slide, um, we were able to inoculate, we are able to inoculate thousands of plants simultaneously with different races. So also those things are published. And I have some videos on YouTube in which you can see how this part is done. This is very important and I feel very lucky because the results on my, of my PhD, I'm using them now in my postdoc. So uh, these graphs that you observe here is the evaluation, the screening of the, of the bananas against the pathogen and the uh, uh, green and orange part are the few resistant ones. Why is this important? Because we can use those ones to develop new bananas. We are, doing trans, um, we are not doing transgenics we are not uh, doing uh, these uh, activities, but we are doing traditional breeding. But spinning this company helps a lot because they have a lot of technology. So what you can see here is a sequencing of, of hundreds of uh, banana plants from different groups. And some of them, the ones with the asterisk, for example, are plants that are resistant to the disease. And we are using those ones to cross to each other to generate new bananas. And why not? Maybe red bananas, bananas with different shapes, with different taste. Or, and also, why not to create a new Cavendish, to create a new Gros Michel that is resistant to this disease. So that's what I'm doing one and a half year ago. I started with the crosses, generating new plants based on seed production, and then also testing those, uh, rec um, recovering those seeds, producing the plants, and then testing them in the greenhouse. This one here is resistant, this one is susceptible. And with this, we can do many things. One, for example, is to do some statistical analysis in order to identify the specific genes responsible for the resistance, but also at the same time using these ones to create new bananas by pollinating. So we think that the future of the banana is the diversity because we cannot rely on just one clone again. Probably we will have another Panama disease in the future, another pandemic, and we want to see something like this. We have this in the supermarket, many types of apples. We want to see something similar with banana. With that, I would like to thank, and yeah, if you have questions, you can always contact me. I have, I'm very active in social media, so you can just connect with me. Thank you very much.